What's up guys? Today I'm going to be doing a review on the Nike Bruin Hyperfeel. So I've skated about 10 pairs of these shoes, but I always skated them with footprint game changer insoles. So this pair right here is actually the first pair I've skated with the Nike Hyperfeel insole in there. And actually, it's really good. I'm, I'm surprised at how good this insole is. This uh, Lunar Lawn thick insole really, to me, has felt just as good as footprint insoles for padding and cushion. So all the Hyperfeel shoes from Nike are really thin. It's three millimeters thick on the actual sole and there's no midsole. So the entire midsole is built into the insole. So the reason I like to have a thin sole like that is because it's almost impossible to sprain your ankle with this shoe. Even if I land on the side of my foot, I never seem to get injured when I'm wearing this shoe. And then I'll go back to a shoe with a thicker sole or cup sole shoe and I will sprain my ankle immediately. Now this is technically a cup sole shoe. It's not a vulcanized shoe, but it's extremely thin. It's thinner than any vulcanized shoe I've ever skated. There's a lot of technology that goes into this shoe. The way they've cut out the sole, it makes it really, really flexible and really grippy. There's even a lot of cutouts on the actual insole itself. Another good thing about this shoe is it's got air holes in the insole and it's got some air holes for extra ventilation on the actual tongue. So it keeps your foot really cool when it's hot outside. Shoe's extremely durable. The suede on this thing takes a long time to wear down. I've been skating this shoe for a while and as you can see, there's not a lot of wear. So the heel on this shoe holds onto my heel really well, but it can be a little bit sharp right there at first. You don't really get that with the Janowski version of this shoe or the Eric Costin Hypervolk version, but with the Bruin, you've got a harder heel, so it's a little bit more sturdy back there. The tongue is extremely flimsy and thin. There's nothing to it. Uh, sometimes with this shoe, it does feel a little bit too thin through the top of the shoe. Uh, when I was doing my How to Ollie video, I found that when I was skating those Etnies Muranos that are really thick and padded up here, I could actually Ollie a little bit higher than I could with these, just because these, the board hit my foot in a different way and it hurt a little more and it didn't, it just didn't Ollie as much. It didn't grip onto the grip tape as much as a thicker shoe. It's a really comfortable shoe. They do run a little bit thin, so I have a wider foot. If you have a narrower foot, this would be a great shoe for you. Uh, but I usually get them real tight and then I just stretch them out over time because they really mold to your foot. I've had several pairs of these and they are extremely comfortable. So the side of the shoe is very durable. Uh, the problem I have is I always wear out the sole of the shoe. Right here I tend to either crack it or actually wear it down to my sock right in the ball of the foot. Cutaways in the bottom of the shoe and in the bottom of the insole make this shoe extremely flexible. I felt like it was a little bit too flexible at first, like it took a little bit to get used to. It was making my foot sore in places that it didn't usually get sore because I was using different muscles that I usually don't use in my foot when I was skating in these. It's kind of like learning to run barefoot on sand. You're using a lot of different muscles in your foot that you're not used to using. A lot of different little balance muscles and stuff like that, but I think that could open up a lot of opportunities too. So I've skated this shoe several times in the past, but I got this new pair specifically for making this video. I've been trying to wear through the side of the shoe before I wear through the sole. And I really think it's impossible unless, unless you like held the shoe against the ground and skated down a hill. Like the suede on this shoe is really tough and I seem to always wear through the sole before I can wear through the side. I've been doing as many kick flips and tray flips as I possibly could in these shoes, and the suede is holding up really well. I did 100 kick flips in this shoe years ago. I never actually put that video up because I just didn't like it, but the shoe just seems to hold up really well for any kind of flip tricks. All the Hyperfeel shoes are great warm-up shoes. They feel broken in as soon as you put them on. They're really flexible. They're great for flat ground. This is a very responsive shoe. It's a lot thinner than the other Hyperfeel shoes. I've had the Janowski ones and a few of the different Costin ones, the Costin 2, Costin 3, 
and the uh, Hypervolk Costin shoe, and all of those are wider than the Bruins. The Bruins are the thinnest shoe, and they always feel kind of tight on my toes, and I get them really tight and stretch them out, but they're very responsive. It feels a little bit like the toe is pointed up just a little bit at the end when you first get this shoe, and the other ones don't feel like that. Like the Hypervolk feels totally flat in the front, but the Bruins seem like they point up just a little bit. So I skated these shoes for about a week with the stock insoles that come with the shoes, and like I was saying, they kind of make my shins hurt, so I put some footprint insoles in this shoe, and it kind of turns this shoe into a zero drop shoe. So the heel and the front of the foot are at the same height from the ground. And when you do that to this shoe, it just becomes a great skate shoe. It doesn't hurt anywhere in your foot. The footprint insoles are great because they're thin, but they still absorb shock just as good as a thicker insole. So it makes it harder to sprain your ankle, but it doesn't hurt when you land Primo. I don't rip my laces at all with this shoe because the laces are right on top of the shoe and you hit the side of the shoe way before you hit the laces. The, it, the area where the tongue and the lacing system is on top, it just doesn't get in the way. This is one of the most breathable suede shoes I have and when I'm skating in the summer, my feet don't get as hot as they normally do in a lot of other skate shoes. So I think it's definitely a really good skate shoe for the summer. I skated high top shoes for a long time, but once I started skating these Nike low top hyper feel shoes, I just can't go back to skating high top shoes because these are so flexible. They're like an extension of your foot. Now well, that's what Nike says anyway, but yeah, they, they feel like just a little bit of a thicker layer of skin over your foot. And if I go back to the skating thick high top shoes, I just can't feel anything, you know? I can't turn my ankle and flick the same way. So I'm not gonna say that Nike is my favorite skate shoe company, but this shoe is a really good skate shoe. You know, it, it does what it's supposed to do. It performs well, and if I'm gonna do a review on it, it is a good shoe. I've been avoiding doing this video on these shoes for like two years now because a lot of people don't know about this shoe and they don't look for it on the internet. So I've been able to find these shoes for $20, $30, you know, really cheap prices for the last few years. And I've skated a ton of different pairs of this shoe just because I've been able to find them on sale on the internet several different places. Now lately, I haven't been able to find as many good deals on this shoe, but if I ever find this shoe for like $20 anywhere on the internet, I'll definitely pick up a pair. So the sole is the worst thing about this shoe. You're gonna wear through the sole quicker than you're gonna wear through probably any skate shoe you've ever had. The side of the shoe, it's great. It lasts a long time, and I've never actually really worn through the side of one of these shoes just from skating it. But the sole, not too good. Besides that, it's a great shoe. It's a light, breathable, has a great flick, very responsive, flexible, everything you could ask for in a skate shoe. So if you want something that's gonna allow your foot to move more freely and uh, let you work some of the muscles that you normally don't work with a really stiff shoe, and you want something that's gonna be good on your ankles, you're not gonna sprain your ankle as much, I would go with this shoe. So there you go, that's my review on the Bruin Hyperfeel from Nike. SB. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of content, reviews, tutorials, and videos about what I'm learning as I grow as a skateboarder, then hit that subscribe button and thanks for watching.